Congress should avoid the false narrative that insufficient federal fundings were to blame for our pathetic COVID response. Take, for example, one Johns Hopkins student created a COVID tracker that the world used, and it was not created by the 21,000 employees at the CDC. As a matter of fact, when HHS met with the CDC, they said it would take months to create such a tracker. Did the CDC need 25,000 employees or 50,000 employees? We just had the head of ASPR, the Assistant Secretary of Preparedness and Response, say she needs more hiring power. How about firing power for incompetence or, or both? I mean, 21,000 employees cannot come up with a COVID tracker. More tragically, the NIH has $42 billion. BARDA, which is a part of the PAPA Act, has another billion dollars, and they couldn't do the most basic clinical research we needed done quickly to answer the basic questions, to end the controversies and the conspiracy theories, to finally get at the questions Americans were asking us, how does it spread? Is it from touching surfaces? Do I need to pour 20 gallons of alcohol on my groceries? Fauci was telling teachers in July to wear gloves and goggles. Or was it spread airborne? That could have been answered in 24 hours in one of our BSL-4 labs, or in one week of clinical research to answer the question, when are you most contagious? What's the peak day of viral shedding? How long do you have to quarantine for? Do masks work? We could have answered this with definitive basic clinical research early. They didn't. And so I think it's fair to ask, how did they do in preparing us for the pandemic. We've spent over $20 billion on PAPA over the last 20 years. What has that done for us? How many lives were saved during the COVID pandemic because of investments by PAPA or BARDA? Now, they've done some good work. I've seen it. But regardless of one's political affiliation, they've got to acknowledge that we doctors and the public were flying blind. We had opinion ruling the day on what we should do or not do when we could have been governed by evidence, policy driven by good basic clinical research. We didn't have that, and so we had a void of clinical research, and guess what filled that void? Over half a year, a year, two years, what filled that void were political opinions. Yeah, but he's not Those controversies could have been ended early. We had the money, and as a result, the COVID pandemic became the most politicized pandemic in U.S. history. It was avoidable. Much of it was avoidable. My research team at Johns Hopkins did a study of where the NIH spent their money in 2020. They spent 2.2 times more money on aging research than they did on COVID research the year of the pandemic. Now, I'm all for aging research, especially as I get older. <laughs> But not during a global pandemic when 3,000 Americans are dying a day. Much of this research was misguided. And our, our study published in the BMJ that I included in the packet showed that it took the NIH, after they decided to fund a research study, it took them five months to give that money to the researchers. That does not work during a health emergency. Now, while the NIH is outside of the scope of the reauthorization, BARDA, is, and I think the public has a right to ask, what has BARDA and what has PAPA done for them in preparing for COVID? How many lives were saved because of the investment? What's the single best investment BARDA made with that roughly $20 billion before the pandemic that saved lives during the pandemic? I think it's fair to ask those questions. Um, how many beds are available today? Do we track the number of beds available? We're going to have more catastrophes, not just viral pandemics, we're going to have mass shootings and floods and other natural disasters. We've spent a lot of money at BARDA, making hospitals a lot of money, giving them a lot of money, private startup companies making money, contractors making a lot of money. But the question is, where was the basic clinical research? We've been funding virus hunting internationally, sending teams to get exotic viruses and bringing them back into populated areas. How about funding basic clinical research? 